Hello, my name is uh, Sanjay Patel. I'm from the Department of Urology at the Stevenson Cancer Center at the University of Oklahoma. And I'm going to be talking to you about blue light versus white light cystoscopy. Uh, just a, uh, one disclosure, I did uh, serve on the Photocure Advisory Board in the past, uh, which is relevant to this particular lecture. Uh, so just to provide some learning objectives, I wanted to uh, review the rationale for high quality TRBT with you, review the limitations of white light cystoscopy, understand technologies that enhance our ability to detect bladder cancer, namely the blue light cystoscopy, and understand the impact of this enhanced detection te technique on uh, detection, recurrence, and progression. And lastly, review some of the guidelines that are out there that discuss uh, uh, blue light cystoscopy. And so as you all know, uh, bladder cancer is a, um, uh, uh, can be a potentially aggressive tumor, even the superficial or non-muscle invasive bladder cancer has a high rate of recurrence within five years, as well as a reasonable rate of progression, particularly if you have uh, T1 or CIS. And so certainly it's a disease that you have to monitor very closely. And the main way to monitor and treat it is, is through uh, transurethral resection of bladder tumors, the TRBT, which is, is the first line of defense against bladder cancer. Uh, certainly, anything we can do to improve this technique and enhance our ability to identify tumors and resect the tumors will result in improved outcomes. We also know that restaging TRBT is important because uh, only one TRBT has been shown um, uh, to be inferior as uh, repeat TRBTs have shown up to 50% of patients have residual tumors. And uh, there's a high rate of upstaging from T8 to T1 of about 15% and T1 to T2 of about up to 40%. And so certainly um, we as urologists, I think, must understand the limitations of one resection that, and the, um, the impact and the benefit that two resections can have. And so uh, ultimately we need to be able to perform high quality TRBTs and that's essential to the management of this disease. It's um, <clears throat> the critical first line treatment. It is both therapeutic and prognostic there is a learning curve associated with it and a, a, a certain art to performing a high quality TRBT. And it must be important to underscore the fact that intravesical therapy, whether it's BCG or chemotherapy is no substitute for a high quality TRBT. They aren't equivalent to a, to a resectoscope. Ultimately you have to resect as much, if not all visible tumor out and then let the intravesical therapies um, kind of take care of the rest. So what are the elements of a high quality TRBT? Well, you know, number one, you have to essentially visualize the tumor. And that's again, gonna be the big focus of this particular talk. But after you visualize the tumor tumors, you have to map the tumor sites, perform a complete resection, ensure that there is uh, muscle in the specimen. As I mentioned to you earlier, restaging TRBT is important as there is a uh, high percentage of patients that have incomplete uh, resections and have tumor present on their repeat TRBT and often as well as some upstaging. And lastly, you have to document it appropriately, uh, focusing on the size, location of tumors, completeness resection, uh, mentioning whether there's appearance of muscle in the specimen or the presence of abs presence or absence of perfor perforation. But ultimately, I think the first stage in performing high quality TB TRBTs is essentially visualizing the tumor. And if you don't have this adequate visualization, you will miss these tumors and they will ultimately be present and later on down the road when you scope a patient, you will think they had a recurrence when in actuality they always had the tumor, it was just never completely resected the first time. And so ultimately the big question right now is, is white light good enough uh, to identify these types of tumors? And as you all know with uh, cystoscopy, there are lots of visual inspection pitfalls. Um, just, just identifying all the tumor sites can be challenging for many reasons. Uh, the color of the tumor is oftentimes the same as the color of the mucosa on the bladder. There's a lot of changes that can occur after intravesical therapy with BCG or chemotherapy, which oftentimes make everything difficult to discern. Um, there's also changes after procedures, you know, with inflammation and treatments and catheters and also infections. So, so all of these things can make it difficult for you to identify the tumor and, and find it in the background of, of this inflammation. And so what do we have there to enhance our ability to de detect this bladder cancer outside of white light? Well, that narrow band imaging has been performed in, and fluorescent cystoscopy with, with uh, essentially blue light uh, cystoscopy are the, are the two big areas. Just briefly to touch on narrow band imaging, uh, the tissues are illuminated with uh, light of narrow bandwidth, particularly that are centered on blue and green. Uh, and so whenever you shine this light, um, it's strongly absorbed by hemoglobin, which is essentially in blood vessels. And so therefore you're able to highlight the vascular structures. They have a green uh, appearance uh, when you shine the, uh, the 
turn on the NBI. And so you can see here on the left side, it's just standard white light cystoscopy. On the right side, you can see that the, uh, the capillaries and the blood vessels are essentially a greenish blue or a cyan color, and they help provide a contrast so that you're able to identify all aspects of these tumors. And so certainly it's gonna enhance your ability to, con uh, to see the contrast between these two, two areas. But I think the main focus and the kind of one of the more, um, uh, pr more predominant techniques right now is fluorescent cystoscopy. And, and how does that work? You can see here that there's various white light images that you can see and you may be able to identify all the tumors, but with the blue light, uh, fluorescent cystoscopy, the tumors are essentially highlighted in a reddish color, which allows you to identify them better and essentially resect them uh, and not miss them. And so how does this work? How does blue light work? Well, as FDA approved in 2010, it uses a photosynthesizing agent, uh, hexaminolevulonic acid, HLA or ALA. And it's what it is, is it's incorporated you, um, into the heme biosynthesis pathway. So you inject this intravesically about an hour before the procedure. It's incorporated into this pathway. It's taken up by um, active cells and essentially it's converted into a photoactive porphyrin. And so what happens is when you illuminate this, the mucosa of the bladder with a blue light, uh, these tissues fluoresce red. So essentially, some, essentially it's like someone took a red highlighter and highlighted the tumors as you can see here and here and here. And so ultimately, they have a delivery system for this. You can see here that there's two different kits here. One's an older one, one's a newer one. Essentially, it's a 100 milligram uh, vial of the Sisview powder, which you is, uh, essentially dilute out in 50 cc's of, of this dilutant that's provided. And you use a lure lock adapter and catheterize the patient prior to the procedure and inject it in and cap the catheter. It will dwell in the patient's bladder for up to an hour and then it is removed. And at that point, you can do the cystoscopy. Um, there used to only be a rigid cystoscopy in the operating room. However, since, uh, uh, since the, uh, that initial time, more recently within the last several years, uh, trials were conducted with flexible cystoscopy. And, and so it's offered or it's available for both in the clinic as well as in the operating room with the rigid cystoscopy. And it, it requires its own set of equipment and um, which must be, must be purchased to, in order to use this technology. So now that we know how it's administered and what it can, what kind of images it can show you, well, what's the evidence behind it? There's numerous trials, phase three trials in the US, Canada and Europe that, was ev that evaluated the blue light cystoscopy with CISFU and really and compared um, it with white light. And they looked at a couple major uh, kind of endpoints, a detection rate, are you able to de detect an additional lesion that you would have missed otherwise on white light cystoscopy? They also looked at recurrence rate and also false positive rates. You don't want to have a, a technology that creates a lot of false positives and you end up doing procedures and essentially taking, uh, potentially causing harm. It can be used both in the, as in the TRBT or operating room setting, and as well as in the surveillance uh, flexible cystoscopy setting in the clinic. And so there's data on both of these settings. And so I wanted to first highlight detection rates with rigid cystoscopy. Um, there was a trial that was um, uh, uh, published in 2010. This essentially got regulatory approval by the FDA in the US. And basically what they did is they took patients to the operating room and counted the number of lesions they found under white light. And then they used the blue light technology and determined how many additional lesions they would have found or how many that would, would they have missed if they had just done white light alone. And so if you look at this curve here and the TA for TA and T1 tumors, approximately 16% of patients would have missed um, a tumor if they just use white, line, white light alone. The, the blue light helped identify 16% of patients that had a tumor. Essentially, you find the tumor, then you're able to resect it. And if you scope them later on and you won't label it or mislabel it as a recurrence, uh, you es essentially took care of it the first time. It was also pretty important in the CIS population as well. About 46% of patients had uh, CIS detected with the blue light alone. Again, it was missed by the white light cystoscopy. Well, if you pull this data together and perform a meta-analysis, this is performed with 2,000 patients, the um, detection rate or the improved detection rate with blue light cystoscopy is about 25%. So essentially one in four patients you would have otherwise missed a lesion on. 
What about with CIS? About the same, it was about 26%. So again, one in four patients, you will end up finding a lesion you would have otherwise missed with standard white light cystoscopy alone. That's in the operating room setting. Well, what about using it in the clinic in the, um, with flex, using a flexible cystoscope? And so the uh, phase three trial was conducted recently. It was published in Journal of Urology in 2008. And basically it took 304 patients um, that had surveillance cystoscopies in clinic. They chose patients who had a history of multiple or recurrent tumors um, that were high grade. And so they wanted to identify patients that had tumors that could be recurrent. 103 patients had a finding that brought that patient to the operating room. 63% had conf uh, 63 patients had confirmed malignancies. And basically what they found was 20% or one in five patients with recurrent tumors were only found using the blue light technology in, in, the, in the clinic. And if you looked at CIS, about, it was about 34%. So one in three patients um, with CIS tumors were only detected using the blue light uh, technology um, in the, in the uh, clinic. So essentially, again, another tool that, that shows that you can identify additional lesions that you would otherwise miss in the flexible cystoscopy setting in the clinic. Well, what about false positive rates? Well, if you look at these two trials, again, the one in 2010 and the one in 2017, 2018, the flexible uh, setting, the rate of false positives was about the same in white light as well as in the blue light group. It was about around 10, 11, uh, 12 percent here, and in the flexible setting, it was about 9.1 percent in either. So they had, they both had the same amount of false positive rates. So again, they're essentially more or less similar in that sense. Well, we know we can detect them now. Well, does it translate down the road to having a reduced recurrence rate? And so um, <clears throat> several series have showed. Um, if you pull all the data together, that the rate of recurrence is reduced about uh, by 10%, 34% in patients that were treated with, uh, uh, that were, that had blue light cystoscopy and about 45% recurred if they did had only white light alone. And this is the recurrence rate up to 12 months. And so uh, also you can see here on the right, um, another uh, series showed that there is a prolonged time to recurrence, meaning it took an um, about 16.4 months median time to recurrence versus 9.4 months with white light. So you will prolong your time to recurrence by using this technology, presumably because you're identifying the tumor earlier, removing it, resecting it, and um, essentially doing a better, higher quality TURBT. Um, and lastly, what about progression? Progression is a little more challenging to identify, um, but there was a meta-analysis in five studies with 1,301 patients and they found the rate of progression was about 6.8% in the blue light group and about 10% in the white light group, which was statistically significant. The time to progression is also prolonged. You can see here that the time to progression in uh, blue light is longer than in white light alone. So again, there may be an impact down the road on progression um, as, you, as, you, as you follow these patients out. And so that begs the next question is, when should I use blue light cystoscopy? Well, they have two consensus papers that they assembled a group of experts to look and, and, uh, and sit down and determine a criteria or, or patient type that would benefit from this technology. And so in the operating room, when you use blue light uh, technology in the operating room, uh, the consensus panel in 2014 recommended that it should be used on initial TRBT in patients with positive cytology, but negative white light findings patients with intermediate risk bladder cancer, the assessment of disease recurrence and also following BCG installation. As you know, after BCG, everything is, is inflamed and red and it's oftentimes difficult to distinguish tumors uh, from inflammation. And then what about the use in, uh, with flexible cystoscopy in the clinic? Uh, another panel was assembled and it was updated in 2018 and they gave a strong recommendation uh, to use the flexible cystoscopy blue light technology at the three month cysto. They also said in patients with a high risk of recurrence, you should use the blue light flexible cysto at three months, six months, and every six months for the first two years. Again, these are patients at high risk for recurrence. Um, if you are gonna perform an office fulguration for low grade cancers, it can be also used at the time of office um, fulguration to identify all aspects of the tumor. And it may have a role in patients with positive cytology in normal or equivocal white light cystoscopy. What about the guidelines? Well, the AUA guidelines um, say that uh, in a patient with non-muscle invasive bladder cancer clinician should offer blue light cystoscopy to improve detection and decrease recurrence. That's based off grade B evidence. 
in terms of diagnosis, if you have a patient with a normal cystoscopy and a positive cytology, which is often a clinical conundrum for all of us, you should consider uh, blue light cystoscopy in addition to looking at upper tract imaging and prosthetic urethral biopsies. The NCCN guidelines have also incorporated this in 2019, stating that it may be helpful in identifying lesions not visualized using white light cystoscopy. So to conclude, uh, high quality TRBT is essential to the management of disease, particularly the first part of it all, which is being able to visualize all, all the tumors um, adequately. Technologies uh, that will help you visualize these tumors can certainly improve outcomes. Fluorescence-based cystoscopy with blue light and CISVIEW have uh, been shown to have an improved detection rate for TA, T1 tumors, as well as CIS. This uh, results in a reduced recurrence rate and may improve progression over time. This technology is available both in the operating room as well as in the office with flex for flexible cystoscopy and is supported by the AUA, NCCN, and, and European guidelines. I'd like to thank you for uh, taking the time out to listen uh, and you guys have a great, great evening.